sheer coincidence that approaching every single waypoint on this route I have been becalmed. I was becalmed off Finisterre, I was becalmed off um, damn you, Cape St Vincent, I was becalmed before Tarifa and last night I was becalmed here before Capo de Gata. I'm burning diesel again because otherwise I'd set fire to myself. Interestingly, the will to live meter is on 100% now. Well and truly rounded. Ciao. Arrivederci. Look, 20.3. 20.3. Maze balls. Of course, this doesn't account for any tide or the uh, displacement of my uh, sounder, so it's coincidence. But still, with the breeze and the sun. This is really fantastic sailing now. This is exactly why I wanted to come to the warm, beautiful Mediterranean. We are currently flying along under that beautiful asymmetric kite let me find something useful so 11 knots of wind and we're doing four knots through the water we're actually going a little faster over the ground because there's some current helping us as well and uh, we've got 86 miles to the next cape and not only am i using the wind to get me there i'm using the sun to power the boat it's uh, 110 watts of solar panels there and that's currently not only powering everything but recharging the batteries and charging my iPhone iP iPad everything I've got power to spare and of course we're using both the Sun and the breeze to dry everything which is absolutely sodden from the last two weeks of beating ahead of four sevens and eights so, never gets completely dry on the ocean i'm not sure why although this feels pretty good but everything was sodden and so today we're going to try and dry as much as possible yeah now we're having fun babe now we are having fun look at that sail that is my favorite thing whoops I need to trim it. This whole coastline looks the same. It's pretty uh, unhospitable. But it looks nice. From a distance. I bet it's baking hot over there. I mean, it's hot here on the boat. Baking hot. Reminds me a bit of Ascension Island. A little bit. In an effort to not get becalmed just before the next cape yet again, I've put my foot down. So now I've got what I think is the optimum sail plan for these conditions, which is second reef main. I know second reef sounds a bit uh, drastic, but this is a much bigger than normal main uh, mainsail for, for a twister, and it's way too powerful. First reef, you have to put it in just for normal. 10 knots sailing to be honest to make the boat feel anything like correct um, so yeah first, uh, second reef on the on the main and sort of half a reef on the uh, on the Genoa as well and that's giving me well as you can see we're up to peaks of seven knots over the ground there you go and through the water about six knots peaks if I do a little more trimming, I can get that a bit more constant at around six knots. But the waves keep knocking us over a little bit, and I don't want to get it to the point where something silly happens. Because, of course, the tiller pilot, he don't sound happy. Can you hear him? You see, he's grinding. Lots of grrr, grrr. Not good. Not good.
yeah so I've put my foot down for the first time I've been very cautious on this whole trip you know there was times when I was flying just a handkerchief of jib as we were going downwind in those big big uh, waves and winds but maybe if I'd have powered up a little bit more we might have had a smoother ride up I'm determined uh, 6.2 I'm determined not to get becalmed yet again if I get becalmed one mile after we've rounded it I, I won't mind it's Cartagena by the way that we're going around um, I won't mind at all I don't mind if I have to sit there for six days but if I get becalmed before it I'm going to be really really pissed off so ah, that's a three so we're hammering it now this boat has a waterline length of 21 and a half feet so those of you with a little bit of naval architecture knowledge can work out the um, the uh, hull speed for this boat and you can see that we are approaching and on the hull speed 